morning everybody welcome to thursday's morning prayer <clears throat> you can probably tell by now that um you know emma and um emma's taken a, an assembly at devonshire school this morning so um that's going to be wonderful um and th thank you f for your prayers um I've, I've had a i've had a dose of man flu so i'm feeling a bit groggy because I've, I've got a, a cold buggy type thing going on so i'm keeping away from people at the moment um just as a precaution um i did a covid test and that's all clear so it is just one of those seasonal things that happen at this time of year thankfully whatever i've got you know you know this is one virus that um, you're not going to catch online there we are so we're here to, to pray together um i will keep s sipping my drink just in case my voice is struggling this morning but let's still our hearts in the presence of almighty god let's keep a moment's quiet together let's become aware of the presence of the holy spirit Welcome Holy Spirit in the name of Christ. Welcome into our hearts, our minds, our wills, our lives this day. Welcome and do your wonderful work within us. For your glory, for your honour, for the praise of Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And so we will be witnesses to your kingdom this day. <clears throat> Amen. So we're just turning to the daily app. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. <clears throat> Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Oh, let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God our God will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> there are two Psalms today. Uh, Psalm 90. And then Psalm 92. Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth, for the earth and the world were formed. From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You turn us back to dust and say, Turn back, O children of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday which passes like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a dream. They fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. For we consume away in your displeasure. We are afraid at your wrathful indignation. You have set their misdeeds before you and their secret sins in the light of your countenance. When you are angry, all their days are gone. 
Our years come to an end like a sigh. The days of our life are three score years and ten, or, if our strength endures, even four score. Yet the sum of them is but labour and sorrow, for they soon pass away and we are gone. Who regards the power of your wrath and your indignation like those who fear you? So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Turn again, O Lord, how long will you delay? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us with your loving kindness in the morning, so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Give us gladness for the days you have afflicted us, and for the years in which we have seen adversity. Show your servants your works, and let your glory be over their children. May the gracious favour of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper our handiwork, O prosper the work of our hands. <clears throat> and then Psalm 92. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, and sing praises to your name, O Most High. To tell of your love early in the morning, and your faithfulness in the night time. Upon the ten-stringed instrument, upon the harp, and to the melody of the lyre. For you, Lord, have made me glad by your acts, and I sing aloud at the works of your hands. O Lord, how glorious are your works! Your thoughts are very deep. The senseless do not know, nor do fools understand, that though the wicked sprout like grass, and all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is only to be destroyed for ever. But you, O Lord, shall be exalted for evermore. For lo, your enemies, O Lord, lo, your enemies shall perish, and all the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But the horn you have exalted like the horns of the wild oxen. I am anointed with fresh oil. My eyes will look down on my foes. My ears shall hear the ruin of the evildoers who rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree and shall spread abroad like a cedar of Lebanon. Such as are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be vigorous in full leaf, that they may show that the Lord is true. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So a reading from um, Second Chronicles chapter 20, beginning at verse 1. The heading in my Bible, the New International, is Jehoshaphat defeats Moab and Ammon. After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites, with some of the Muonites, came to make war on Jehoshaphat. Some men came and told Jehoshaphat, A vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the sea. It is already in Haziz and Tamar that is, Engedi. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in the front of the new courtyard and said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. O our God, did you not drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel, and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it. <clears throat> 
and have built in it a sanctuary for your name, saying, If calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague or famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress, and you will hear us and save us. But now here are men from Ammon, Moab and Mount Seir, whose territory you would not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. O oh our God, will you not judge them? <clears throat> For we have no power to face this vast army <coughs> that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. All the men of Judah, with their wives and children and little ones, stood there before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jeh Jehaziel, son of Zechariah, the son of Benaniah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mataniah, a Levite and descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. He said, Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem this is what the Lord says to you do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army for the battle is not yours but God's tomorrow march down against them they will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel you will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, go out to face them tomorrow and the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed with his face to the ground and all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down in worship before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Korathites and Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Early in the morning they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Judah and the people of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will will be successful and I'm going to um, just carry on with verse 21 after consulting the people Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as I went out at the head of the army saying give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever this is the word of the Lord Thanks be to God. Before our next reading, we have a response, a song of the covenant. I have given you as a light to the nations and have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it, I am the Lord and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes of the blind, <clears throat> to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Those words based on Isaiah chapter 42 verses 5 to 8 glory to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever amen i have given you as a light to the nations and i have called you in righteousness a reading now from mark's gospel chapter 15 beginning at verse 42 
when <coughs> excuse me <coughs> when evening had come and since it was the day of preparation that is the day before the sabbath joseph of arimathea a respected member of the council who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of god went boldly to pilate and asked for the body of jesus then pilate wondered if he were already dead and summoning the centurion he asked him whether he had, he had been dead for some time when he learned from the centurion that he was dead he granted the body to joseph then joseph bought a linen cloth and taking down the body wrapped it in the linen cloth and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock he then rolled the stone against the door of the tomb mary magdalene and mary the mother of joseph saw where the body was laid this is the word of the lord thanks be to god lord as we consider your word this day we ask that you would speak into our lives in the name of jesus in the power of the holy spirit amen i don't know whether you've had the experience in your own life but certainly history and indeed the um the scriptures are full of people who um, on a very human level they reached the end of their resources there was no more they could do and so they they did the best with what they had okay so um, just when everybody thinks it's come to an end often um, when we we read the scriptures we see God do wonderful things as people continue to trust in him and so with our passage from the Old Testament, there is this um, crisis situation um, facing the southern kingdom of Judah. Remember, um, in those days, Judah and Israel were two separate kingdoms. Um, Israel with ten tribes in the north and Judah with two tribes in the south, basically Judah and Benji Benjamin. Um, and some Israelites would come to live in those, those regions around Jerusalem. Um, following the apostasy of various northern Israelite kings. So we have a much diminished nation. Out of the 12 tribes, this is the two tribes in the south, and this vast army is coming from Ammon and Moab and Edom. Traditional rivals and enemies of Israel, but our passage tells us that when the people were coming out of Egypt, um, some of them... Um, you know, the, the Israelites didn't devastate their lands and the Lord allowed Israel to pass through and so they did not no harm to these nations and yet here's a situation where um, Judah, who uh, have, have done nothing, nothing against these nations really um, are facing those nations coming against them and the backs are really against the wall because this is a a coalition of um, three nations who were all um, adjacent to one another and yet they combined and this combined force was coming against Judah and far greater than the troops and the resources that Judah themselves could muster so they were facing overwhelming odds Jehoshaphat is an example to us because as a godly king his first recourse is to turn to God and as, as an example he inspires uh, the Levites and the priest and um, assembles the people in the temple courts and they come together to fast and to pray and to seek the face of God in all humility reminding God of his promises but knowing that unless God intervenes really they don't stand much chance and so the word of the Lord comes through the prophet. And it's this. Do not fear <clears throat> this vast army that's coming against you. Just trust in the Lord and you will see deliverance. 
Now here's the thing which goes totally against the way we do things in the world. That when an army comes against us, we um, muster an army ourselves to see, one, if we can defend ourselves against this army. Uh, and I guess secondly, can we actually beat this army that's coming against us? Or thirdly, this is just damage limitation, but we show some kind of resistance. And God tells Jehoshaphat and the Israelites to do <laughs> something which really is um, counter-intuitive, counter which is, I want you to go out and, and face this vast army, and the weapon you're going to use is your praise and worship of me. So there they are, the, the people of Judah, Jehoshaphat leading them the next day, sending the Levites and the Levite singers ahead, leading the people in singing, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. It doesn't seem like a, a mighty weapon, does it? And then we come to our New Testament reading where again, it's the end of what anybody can do because Jesus has died on the cross. And so Joseph of Arimathea is, is coming to do what he can, which is um, in terms of showing dignity, he's going to take the body of Jesus and prepare it for burial in accordance with Jewish custom before the Sabbath comes because it's a Passover weekend and it's a holy weekend. And so Joseph, according to Jewish custom, wants to make sure that the body of Jesus is prepared before the Passover could be celebrated. And so he's coming in all humility and in an act of love. And really a great risk on one level, going to Pilate, and Pilate is the person with all the authority and the power in terms of um, Roman rule in, in um, Judea in those days um, but upon checking that Jesus is dead he releases the body to Joseph and that's all that Joseph can do but you see Joseph reaching out in love to our Lord and Saviour Jesus not knowing what's going to come next not realising that he's, he's going to uh, play a part in what will be um, the most glorious weekend in the calendar for the human race. Because Jesus has died on the cross for the sins of the whole world. And Joseph is playing a part, perhaps unwittingly, in the fulfilment of prophecy. Because Jesus is laid in a tomb after Joseph has prepared the body. And then the tomb is sealed. And on the third day, Jesus will be raised from the dead. And after 40 days, he will ascend, ascend on high. And eventually, on that day of Pentecost, the power of the Holy Spirit will be poured upon that infant church. And so, Joseph, the infant church are going to receive something which is beyond their imagination and capacity to comprehend. We're not entirely sure what happens to, to, to Joseph's faith. All we do know is that he is clearly affected by Jesus and he wants to do the best he can for a rabbi that he loves. And where he is in his understanding of the Messiah, we don't know. But here's the thing. Often in our lives, we can feel weak and vulnerable and overwhelmed. And sometimes in those moments where we can be down, and let's face it, we can all be down, what we offer to God seems so meagre. And if we're honest, we think, is this going to make any difference? Well, I think both passages of Scripture today encourage us on two levels. One, when our backs are against the wall, that's the time to praise our Lord. Yes, we should pray the Lord all the time. You know, I'm not saying we have to wait till our backs against the walls. But when our, our backs are against the wall, let us praise the Lord. Not because our backs are against the wall, but Jehoshaphat praised God for who God is and was. And that's what we praise God for, that he's never changing. His power is the same yesterday, today and forever. And when we reach the end of ourselves and we offer ourselves to God, 
we find that we, we enter into new beginnings because what we can't do <coughs> God can do so whatever we whatever we face today two things let us continue to give thanks to God and let us prepare ourselves to see amazing things let us praise the Lord in all circumstances not for all circumstances but in all circumstances and sometimes which is the second thing when we've reached our capacity and we can do no more that's when the Lord will step in now you can tell this as a live broadcast because the postman's at the door and he's got a parcel so I'll be back in a minute There we are, live from the studio, a parcel's arrived, so I'll put that to one side. <clears throat> Today, as we commit ourselves to Almighty God, may the Lord bring his deliverance of exactly what we need this day. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that when we reach our capacity, you are only just beginning. We thank you and praise you that no matter what situation we find ourselves in, you are faithful and you are the same yesterday, today and forever. You are the God who defeated those enemies against your people. You are the God who defeated death and hell itself through our Lord Jesus Christ. And you are the God who no matter what we face today, you are able. And for that we give you thanks and praise. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We continue with our service. With some words of reflection fear not for I have redeemed you I have called you by name you are mine fear not for I have redeemed you I have called you by name you are my <coughs> when you pass through the waters I will be with you when you walk through fire you shall not be burned I have called you by name you are mine Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever amen you promised O god to save us from our enemies from the hands of all the haters and so let's turn to the lord in prayer we pray today 
Heavenly Father, for the day before us and the things that we must do. We pray for our world and all its needs at this time. We pray, Lord, that you will govern this nation in a way that pleases you, that those who are put in authority would yield to your inspiration and your wisdom. We pray for your church in this nation, the Church of England and all denominations that name the name of Christ, and glorify you Lord we ask that you be with our archbishops Justin and Stephen we pray for the diocese of Blackburn for Bishop Julian Bishop Philip, Bishop Jill we pray for our archdeacons Mark and David and we pray for all Christian ministers, clergy and lay, all those who serve you. Lord, we commit to you those who govern locally, so we pray for Blackpool Town Council. We pray for those who lead our communities and those who provide local services for this town. We remember those who work with young people. Remember, <clears throat> remember Matt, our children's worker. Remember Devonshire School this day and the assembly that takes place this morning. We remember our schools and colleges and universities across the town. And we remember those who work for the emergency and rescue <coughs> services. In the silence of our hearts, let us pray for those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. To pray for ourselves. And let us bring before the Lord those things which weigh upon our hearts this day for ourselves or other people. Father, we thank you that you hear us when we pray to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, and that you are able to do all things above all that we can even ask or imagine. Amen. The Collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us your gift of faith, that forsaking what lies behind and reaching out to that which is before, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us as we use the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. <coughs> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Bless you. Have a good day. Thank you for your prayers, as I continue to get over this lurgy. Some words as we finish. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Bless you. See you soon, folks.